33rd day of our Lenten journey. Let's start by lighting our candle to remind us that the light of Christ is always with us. We do not journey alone. Today's reflection is written by Shen Ping Gao. The scripture reading he chooses for this particular reading is from Galatians 3.28. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And as he reflects on this particular reading, my previous pastor in Toronto is a white gentleman from Montreal who speaks French and English, but not Chinese. When he planned to retire from my church in 2019, I invited him and a couple of our church leaders to my house to say goodbye over a meal. No one had any problem drinking the red wine, but after we began to serve the food from the Chinese hot pot and plates, I discovered that one of my guests wasn't eating. After a while, he asked me for a knife and fork. Suddenly I realized, by ignorance, my family had just set out chopsticks and bowls for everyone, but no knives and forks. My mistake embarrassed me and my family. I apologized and immediately provided my guests with cutlery. As we were close friends, without realizing it, I had treated them the same as any Chinese person who had used chopsticks since early childhood. It was a rare moment of an Anglo white Canadian feeling like an outsider. Usually the script is flipped. It's immigrants who perpetually feel as if they don't fully belong in Canada, as if there's no room at the table or that the etiquette or norms at the table are ones they do not understand and don't know how to practice. Let us also not forget the centuries of colonialism and imperialism that has shaped the spread of Christianity. When the new world of Latin, when the new world of Latin America, North America, Africa, and Asia was continuously discovered by Westerners, the local cultures and spiritualities of indigenous people were suppressed and subordinated. The people of the so-called Third World began liberating themselves from colonialism in 1945. In the 21st century, the post-colonial church aspires to interculturalism, with the dominant church striving for reconciliation. It has become necessary for the collective sins of the white oppression and violence to be confessed and to recognize a new relationship of equality can emerge. The church can offer a space to unify Christian culture, cultural differences because we are one in Christ by virtue of our faith. This journey will not be an easy one. Our blind spots and prejudice are hard to overcome, but it will be worth it. And some things to think about from that particular reflection. Have you had moments of, of recognizing your own cultural blind spots or prejudice? What was that like? How can you do more to see the world from the perspective of peoples with different experiences? And what does it mean to be united in Christ in an intercultural church that respects and affirms cultural differences? Let us close out in prayer. Heavenly Jesus, thank you for your resurrection, which unifies us on earth with all peoples. No matter our differences in cultural identity, your kingdom comes, your will be done. Let us be hybrid in culture, but unified in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all, and join us again tomorrow because after tomorrow we head into Holy Week. Stay safe and God bless.